Kelly's. Okay. All right. Good. Prior to tonight's meeting, we'll have an invocation offered by Commissioner Twine, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Father God, it's me again, seeking your grace and your understanding and your wisdom for this meeting tonight. We will always thank and praise you for your mercy upon us, Lord, and we thank you in your name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Mr. Crestor, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Harris? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mr. Brady? Here. Ms. Twine? Here. Mr. Meinzer? Here. Mr. Waddington? Here. Commissioner okay. Diab, before you the minutes from our meeting of February the 10th, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Meinzer? I move that we accept the minutes of this uh, February 10th meeting and dispense with the formal meeting. Second. Meeting. There's been a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. We'll turn now to audience participation on agenda items only. Please step to our podium and tell us your name and address. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to excuse uh, Commissioner Poole. Excellent. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, the motion will be approved. Hearing no objection, Commissioner Poole is excused. Now we'll turn to agenda. Now we'll turn to audience participation on agenda items. Thank you, Mr. Brady, City Commissioners, staff. Tim Schwanger, 362 Sheffield Way, representing Save Our Shoreline Parks this evening. Um, item number two, which is the $108,000 to MHSK for preparation of a downtown opportunity zone master plan. I had a couple of questions on that. According to the supporting documents, uh, this downtown opportunity zone uh, first came up in 2018 and it mentions that there were stakeholders involved in, in those meetings and I was, I'd be curious to find out who the stakeholders actually were. Um, it, it also mentions in the spring documents that uh, public outreach will include, but not limited to online surveys, steering committees, stakeholders, focus group, round tables, et cetera. The problem we're, that we may run into here is that it looks like the stakeholders, focus groups, steering committees will be the primary source and the public is left with just taking a simple survey. And in the past, when we've had major studies done like this, or whatever you want to call it, uh, the public was heavily involved. And I hope that we can heavily involve the general public and even have members from the general public, not necessarily myself, but anybody that's interested in the waterfront. You know, whatever happens in the downtown core minus the waterfront, if you want to put a nuclear power plant in the middle of Columbus Avenue, go ahead. But when it comes to the waterfront development, I think the public not, not just the downtown people, the, the waterfront of Sandusky's, all 24,000 of us, not just 25 downtown business owners or property owners or somebody from the planning commission or somebody from the zoning commission, but it's, it's the public. So let's get the public involved again. Uh, what is the funding incentive for developers or investors in this opportunity zone? And if we can have an explanation of how this actually works for the people that are watching on TV, that'd be great. And what is the difference or advantage of an opportunity zone versus an enterprise zone, which we have downtown, TIFs, which we have downtown, tax abatement, which we have downtown, port authorities, which we have down for downtown? What is the difference and what do you expect the outcome from an additional study that there's a lot of similarities in this proposed scope of work that mimics many of the other studies that we've done recently, namely, the bicentennial uh, study, the comprehensive plan, the strategic plan that, ha that was, has been done in the last three years. Why is there a necessity <coughs> to duplicate some of those services? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Schwager. We'll try to get you answers to those questions uh, when that piece of legislation comes before us. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nick Etzeris. I'm with uh, First Energy. Just wanted to, to come uh, introduce myself to the the ones here that I haven't met before, and um, make sure to there's make sure there's no outstanding issues with uh, Ohio Edison or First Energy that you want me to be uh, brought attention to that I can make sure to take care of. So, any, anything that um, questions or anything that you need on my end, or 
Thank, thank you, Mr. Gasteris, for being here tonight. I, I understand that you are you are the new uh, you are the new person at, at First Energy. And I know we're a little out of order here. Our this audience participation is meant for agenda items. Oh, well, I apologize. But, but, I'm sorry. That, that's okay. I, we'll, we'll give you a dispensation. Sorry for about that. Yeah. On that also, and I did ask you to be brief. I, I you were more brief than even I thought you would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, like I said, I just want to. thank. We all want to thank you for that. It, no problem at all. Yes, yeah, like I said, I just want to make sure. I apologize for going out of order. I just want to make sure that's, that's okay. Congratulations on, on your new position, and uh, thanks so much for working with you. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you again. Have a nice night. Thanks so much. Thank you as well. See you in the YouTube video. Any any other uh, any other uh, participants in the audience that wish to speak on agenda items? Mr. Lamarca. Mr. Brady, uh, commissioners, Tom Lamarca, 206 48th Street. Um, I question the study that's being proposed to be passed tonight, item number two. Uh, it seems to me that there are some other studies that are probably collecting dust in a drawer somewhere. I don't want this to be a repeat of a study that's already been uh, completed. But uh, I also question whether this bid for the study is going to be like the design build projects downtown where the numbers just continue to come in after the fact. Uh, and I ask that because it says on the on the item two that it will not exceed a cost of $108,000. But just like the other bids that were presented for Shoreline Drive and Jackson Street Pier, when you read down a little further into the bid documents, it says reimbursable expenses for travel, meals, print, et cetera, are estimated not to exceed an amount of $4,300. That's, that's part one. Um, and then when you take it down a little further from that, it goes on to say that uh, MKSK also wants to charge extra for, uh, subject to approval, but call extra for uh, trips, uh, including one person, including the meeting, materials, and expenses. That's $1,800 for that trip. I guess that's to tell you what they decided that they want to do. And then uh, a trip with one person, including uh, materials. Uh, and it's, it's titled the same way, but this trip would be $7,000. And then the steering committee uh, meeting, including materials and expenses, item C uh, is uh, $6,000. And then a public meeting in materials and expenses per page six uh, of $20,000. So there's potentially uh, another $30,000 that could be thrown onto that $108,000 cost. And I just want to be sure we're all playing in the same ballpark. Uh, it's $108,000 or is it $138,000? That's my cut. Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Mark. We, we have a representative here from, M M uh, from that organization also, and I'm confident still be able to deal with those questions when we get to that, that legislation. Any other uh, members of the public that would like to speak on agenda items this evening? If not, we will begin tonight's hearing with a, uh, tonight's meeting with a public hearing on our fiscal year 2020 CDGB one year action plan. And conducting that hearing will be our community development manager, Ariel Blanca. Thank you, Mr. President and members of commission. This will be the first of two public hearings for the city's 2020 Community Development Block Grant Program year. As an entitlement city, Sandusky directly received an allocation of funds from the Department of Housing and Urban Development to carry out selected activities within the community. Eligible activities include, but are not limited to, acquisition, rehabilitation, demolition, public facility, infrastructure improvements, and planning activities. <laughs> Under this grant, there are certain requirements which cannot be exceeded. In general, these include a maximum of 20% of the allocation to be expended on administration and planning expenses, and a maximum of 15% of the allocation to be expended on public services during the program year. 70% of the funds must benefit low to moderate income persons or households, while all of the funds must meet one of three national objectives, these include low to moderate income benefit, elimination of slum and blight, and community urgent need. Sandusky anticipates an allocation of approximately $720,000 of new funds for program year 2020. The following activities were budgeted in the 2019 program year, which is currently underway. 
The first was program administration for $121,000. Second was fair housing for $9,500. Public facilities for $315,000. Clearance and demolition, $191,000. Parks and ADA improvements, $35,000. The Erie County Senior Center Meals on Wheels program was $30,000 and the Ogle Mobile Food Pantry and Market was $15,000. Subrecipient funding applications became available for program year 2020 starting on February 14th and are due to the planning department no later than 5 p.m. on March 6th. A draft of the action plan will be available on March 25th, after which there will be a 30-day comment period. The draft plan will be available for review at City Hall as well as the Sandusky Library. Public input on community needs relating to the CDBG funding can be submitted by written correspondence to the Planning Department at 240 Columbus Avenue, Sandusky, Ohio, emailed to me at ablanca at ci.sandusky.oh.us or by phone to 419-627-5847. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blanca. Is this is, this is a public hearing uh, we will entertain questions or comments from the audience as well as from commission. Anyone from the audience wish to speak uh, on this public hearing? Mr. Schwanger. Me, my na name and address again, do you? Okay. I recognize you, but go ahead and put, put it in the record. Mr. Schwanger, 362 Sheffield Way. The question I would have for Ms. Blanca is uh, she mentioned some of the dollar amounts that are maybe going to be going somewhere, but can we get more specific, like $315,000 for public facility? Is there a particular project? Uh, so much money to, to the uh, Parks and Recreation Program. Can we be specific on where those dollars might be going if, 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 there, if that's available? So the dollar amounts that I provided were for the current program year, which is um, started Sorry. which started uh, June, July 1st and runs through June 30th of this year. So for public facilities, that $315,000 went towards the reconstruction of Shoreline Drive. And then um, you said parks and the parks was the JC Park improvements. And let's see, the Meals on Wheels program was the public services along with the OGO mobile food pantry. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? And, yes. And so for 2020 right now, you're taking, you're taking ideas right now. You've already had a public, you've already had a meeting though. So we've had a community, uh, yes, a CPAC meeting already. And then now we are still taking public input. Yes. Thank you. Good. Good questions. Thank you, Mr. Schwager. <clears throat> Anyone else from the public? Commissioners, any comments or questions for Ms. Blanc? If not, I will declare this public hearing closed. Thank you, Ms. Blunt. Commissioners, you have before you several communications from staff recommending various legislation. Can I have a motion to accept those communications? So moved. Second. Right. And a motion and a second uh, discussion. Without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Commissioners, we have, uh, I think we have five items on our consent agenda tonight. Are there any of those? Consent agenda items that you would like moved to the regular agenda. Ms. Cresser, will you present those items on the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. President. Item A is a proposed zone map amendment for four parcels located on East Washington Street. This is a second reading. Item B is for the purchase of turnout gear from municipal and emergency services for the Sandusky Fire Department. Item C is authorization to submit a grant application to the Ohio Department of Public Safety for the Fire Department. And item D is an agreement with State Collection and Recovery Services, LLC, for debt collection for the Fire Department and the Code Compliance Department. <clears throat> item E is to accept five parcels through the Land Reutilization Corporation. Commissioners, having heard these items on the consent agenda, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Fisher Twain. I move to accept the consent, consent agenda and declaring that all ordinances and or resolutions as drafted and presented to the city commission under the consent agenda shall take effect in accordance with the section reflected in the ordinances and or resolutions, whether it be in accordance with section 13 or section 14 of the city charter. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Cresser, you pull the commission on the motion first, please. 
Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. I'm sorry. I'm going to start with Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And Mr. Harris? Yes. And now on the ordinances and resolutions. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And Mr. Harris? Yes. Those ordinances and resolutions are passed. Mr. Cresser, we present item number one on the regular agenda. Yes, item number one is an <coughs> ordinance authorizing and approving a grant in the amount of $65,000 through the Substantial Development Grant Program to Family Health Services, LLC, in relation to the property located at 1912 Hayes Avenue and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. There have been a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Klein. I see that Mr. Story is at the podium. He is. Mr. Story, would you give us an overview of uh, what this legislation is about? And I also know that uh, I can tell that I have some friends in the audience that uh, are representatives of that organization. So if any of them would like a chance to speak, uh, you could certainly bring them into the equation also. <coughs> President, uh, I'm here tonight with Family Health Services. President Chief Executive Officer uh, David Tatro is also present tonight, so I thank him for being here in attendance. Uh, tonight, uh, again, Family Health Services is here. They're wholly owned by Family Health Services of Erie County, Inc., which is a nonprofit established about 10 years ago to serve the city and the county, providing comprehensive primary care services, preventative women's health services, behavioral health, science, health services, and a pharmacy. They currently operate two locations here within the city at 1912 Hayes Avenue, which we'll get into in a second, and 620 East Water Street. This project that we're here for tonight is a build out of the dental facility located at the south campus of Firelands Regional Medical Center, the old Providence Hospital site, to serve the uninsured and or underinsured residents of the area. This is strictly a lease arrangement between Firelands Regional Medical Center with the lessee being Family Health Services, LLC. And it's important to note that from the data provided and from government data as well, how lacking this market segment is, uh, coverage for the market segment, I should say, for the low income and underprivileged of the region, labeling it a dental desert um, and weightless in the thousands. One of the quotes that I found in the research was that I, it stuck with me, as you can tell, the health of a community by the health of its citizens' teeth. Project description, this will be a build out of a new dental practice with at the end of it will have eight to 10 chairs and approximately 3,000 square feet. Total project cost will be $1.5 million. The build out 500,000 on the physical side and on the equipment installation, $800,000. The hope is the build out should take no longer than six months and they hope to be operational by about a year from now, March 31st, 2021 at the latest. These are the uh, important uh, data points for you to consider um, at the year at the end of year one It's estimated that this will facilitate 10,000 patient visits growing up to at the end of year three 20,000 patient visits The staffing will grow from two and a half dentists two hygienists six dental assistants two front desk, desk personnel All the way to having 21 full-time employees by the end of year three The revenue stream should be approaching three million dollars estimated in the pro forma to be 2.86 million and the payroll will approach 1.5 million all in. The breakdown on the line items of the sources and uses are as follows. Again, the physical construction build out cost 500,000, the equipment purchase 800,000, soft cost contingency at 200,000 for 1.5 million. On the sourcing side, you have owner equity at 550,000, bank financing from Savista at 900,000, and our grant penciled in at $65,000, which is 4.3%. This is the renders of the drawings of the space. As you'll note, there are uh, approximately eight to 10 chairs slotted within the drawings. This came before our Economic Development Incentive Committee earlier this month, and the committee unanimous, unanimously approved $65,000 uh, from our Substantial Development Grant Program. And again, the project is, should be completed in about a year, when one month, March 31st, 2021. Any questions from, from <laughs> President? Sure questions, comments? Mr. Chairman, 
Mr. Toy. I think this will be a great asset to the community. Um, just from a personal standpoint, as growing up here in Sandusky, um, in a family that really didn't have a lot of resources, uh, dental care was not really high up on the list for those things that we diverted funds to. <laughs> so I think this will be a, a great asset to the community for those in the lo low income bracket that need that type of service. Um, again, um, I, I appreciate um, the, the idea and the submission of the uh, grant request. Thank you, Commissioner. Fine. Additional comments, Commissioners? Uh, Mr. Story, I, this is probably a question perhaps for their CEO, and, and it, it's, it's somewhat of a softball and not really a question because I know the answer, but I would like to hear the answer from, from their, from their uh, uh, person also. The there can be a criticism that uh, this type of an operation uh, takes dollars away from the for-profit dentist in our community. I know that is not the case. I would like you to explain how this works. Well, I, I'm, <clears throat> Mr. Brady, uh, one of the first things I did when I got here in July of 2019 was to start to de develop a dental service line. And so I reached out to a lot of the private dentists. Mm -hmm. And we have right now, I think, 10 to 12 private dentists who are supporting this. And the reason why they're supporting this is, and I have no malice towards private practice dent dentists, but it's difficult for them because of the reimbursement for the Medicaid patients. And this is a really good, a very symbiotic relationship. We work with the private dentists and they see it. They, they have panels of Medicaid patients, two full. And as uh, Mr. Story mentioned, right now the waiting list is like 2,000. So we're not we're not competing at all with the private dentists. As a matter of fact, I've had more than one of them stop by my office and say, David, how's it going with the, the dental practice? It's long and coming at this twine set. Um, and, uh, as John Story put it uh, very eloquently, you can tell of the, by the health of the community when you look at their oral hygiene. And they're, they're, you know, the wait list in Fremont is 1,800. Bright now is three months. Uh, Erie County has a wait list, uh, so and I've talked to uh, numerous people like Pete Shade, and you know he welcomes this because there's just too many people out there who need better oral hygiene, and they they tend to be in that um, low income category, which is what we as a federally qualified health center, <clears throat> that's our mission to to look for um, those in low income, limited resources, those that are uninsured, and I'm, I, that's probably more than what you wanted to hear. It, it, is, it is not. Oh. I am I'm astonished by the numbers that that, that you anticipate seeing 20,000 uh, patients visits in, in in year three. That tells me there is a there is a terrific need here, and, and thank you for taking this on and filling that need. Yes, thank you. I, I do want. Can I mention one other? Sure. Um, as a federally qualified health center, we have the thing called HIPSA. HIPSA is our score. It's a score that they give federally qualified health centers depending upon the number of low income in the area. And the score is from zero to 25. I've never seen a score even close to 25, but here in Erie County, here in Sandusky, it's a 23. Why does that help us? That helps us recruit uh, dentists from schools and what we're able to do is bring them in and pay some of their tuition. That's why they come here. They do three years here, usually then, and move on to private practice. So we're not going to have a problem, I, I believe, and I have some really good leaders that are good at recruiting in schools uh, in Ohio, and uh, one of my favorites is Temple in Pennsylvania. But we'll, we'll find those dentists, and those dentists that they see 15, 20 patients a day. So if you have four of them and the volume's there, which we know the volume's there, um, it'll work very well. Good, thank you. And th I, can I thank, I wanna thank the city um, for just hearing, hearing this, this particular grant and, and helping us out. Um, and we hope to, to partner with you in, a, in some type of marketing as we move forward. Because I think the city of Sandusky is making a, 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 a gallant effort in trying to provide for those residents in low income. And that you all should be congratulated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions? Commissioners? Press <coughs> we pull the commission on the motion. 
Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. And now on the orders. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Item number two, Ms. Crescent. Item number two is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an agreement for professional services with MKSK of Columbus, Ohio for the downtown Sandusky Opportunity Zone Master Plan Project and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioner, have you heard this ordinance? How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Discussion. Ms. Bonington, I think uh, you are going to lead us off on this discussion and with uh, perhaps some help from a uh, representative from MKSK. Thank you, Mr. President, members of commission. Uh, permission is being requested to enter into contract with MKSK from Columbus, Ohio, for professional services to prepare the downtown opportunity zone plan. Due to the designation of the downtown as an opportunity zone, which offers financial incentive at the state level for investors or federal level, level it is anticipated that development will steadily continue in the downtown. Staff believes it is pertinent to prepare a plan that will prepare uh, the city for continued development. The plan will recommend physical infrastructure improvements, policy revisions, and large-scale investments, both public and private, that should be encouraged downtown. The infrastructure and development should meet or exceed current resident and business expectations while continuing to make Sandusky a place for new residents and businesses want to locate, draw visitors, and spur additional investment, both residential and commercial. The plan will address specifically, but not exclusively, connections to adjoining neighborhoods, the waterfront and Battery Park, high-level multimodal recommendations, streetscape and intersection improvements, <clears throat> existing and anticipated parking needs, and recommendations on large public and private investment sites and market opportunities. The total contract cost will not exceed 108,000, which includes the um, reimbursables that were mentioned earlier, um, and also the um, the additional optional items that were also mentioned prior um, by Mr. LaMarca, those were options that we chose not to include in this contract, so there will be no change orders. It is $108,000 not to be exceeded. Okay. Uh, the funding is as followed, 10,000 from the Capital Projects Fund Mobility, 73,000 from Issue 8 Capital Funds, <coughs> 5,000 from Firelands Regional Medical Center, 5,000 from Cedar Point Park, 5,000 from Savista, and 10,000 from the Dorn Foundation, which is pending approval uh, during the city manager's report tonight. It's being requested that the ordinance be passed under section 14 of the city charter, so the planning process can begin as soon as possible, and so the document can be placed, uh, can be utilized at the earliest opportunity. Uh, before I turn it over to Aaron Blair from MKSK to uh, give a short, very short presentation on some um, example projects that their firm has, has undertaken. I just wanted to touch on a couple more items that were brought up from Mr. Schwanger. Um, first of all, the Opportunity Zone um, is a federal designation. Um, it, it's not a local incentive. So if a, de if a developer wants to um, invest within the Opportunity Zone, it allows them the opportunity to, for, to defer th some of their capital gains. Um, I won't go into great detail on that, but it's not a local incentive. Um, prior stakeholder meeting that was um, convened downtown um, some time ago, probably at least a year ago, um, was informational only. So the purpose of that meeting um, was not to talk about the plan for downtown. It was in regard to informing possible um, investors and property owners what the Opportunity Zone um, could allow in regard to federal um, um, incentives. Um, public outreach, we do agree the more public outreach the better. Um, we are planning on doing some of that in-house in order to reduce our budget. Um, so that's why we did not choose some of the optional um, items in the uh, proposal. We'll be doing some in-house public meetings to take some comments in addition to what the consultant MKSK will be doing as well. 
Uh, this plan differs from recent plans, um, which were high level um, citywide plans, high level look at downtown. This, will, um, this plan will dive much deeper into downtown, um, look at, um, analyze exactly what's there right now, and then provide um, items such as streetscape typicals and cost estimates, which would not have been prepared for the downtown in our past plans. Um, and then I already uh, went over the not to exceed 108,000. So I'm happy to answer any questions um, specifically in regard to process or the scope. Um, but also I have Aaron Blair from MKSK here to just give an overview on their, on their firm for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pike. You've done an excellent job of, of answering those questions and uh, kind of laying a framework for us. Uh, fair to say that, that, our, that our prior plans perhaps were looking at this area from, I don't know, 30,000 feet. This is down to looking at it from 500 feet. So it's a much more targeted approach. I, I think I understand that uh, it's not a duplication of services. We're not, we're not reinventing another plan. This is a plan that has very specific goals, very specific tasks laid out. And as I read through the contractual document, they are very specific. And I, I do see where we opted not to exercise some options that apparently you believe, as I do, that we can do the public outreach. And we will do public outreach, but we'll do it in-house and, uh, and not spend a lot of travel time money on, on uh, consultants. That's correct, Mr. President. Good. <coughs> this is our representative from MKSK. Hi, my name is Erin Blair. Thank you so much for giving us a few minutes to introduce ourselves. I'm really excited to kick off this project and work with you in partnership with the Sandusky team and with your leadership. And we're, I'm just here today to give you a little intro so you can get to know MKSK a little bit. We are an office, we are a firm of about 100 people and there's 15 to 20 planners depending on how you count whether you're an urban designer or, an, or a planner, and then most of our firm is made up of landscape architects. Our biggest office, our mothership, is in Columbus, Ohio. That's where I work. And then we also have six other offices across the Midwest and Mid-South. At a highest, the highest level, we are people who are passionate about people and places. We are landscape architects, urban planners, and urban designers. But we specialize in, have expertise in a really wide varying of degree of fields. So about a third of our work is with municipalities, with townships, villages, cities like Sandusky, with counties, even with state at statewide planning e efforts. We also do about a third of our work with institutions, so hospitals, colleges, universities, private institutions, libraries, and we do about a third of our work with the development community, and that's working on development projects, sometimes individual buildings, and sometimes district-wide um, development projects so we really understand things from lots of different angles and we believe that lends a lot of <coughs> strength to our planning process because we understand what all of those different players are going to want to see and how they all fit together to make a great place. Some recent work, these are all districts and downtowns that we've worked in and most of these projects have been completed in the last five years. So we do a lot of district and downtown planning with that 500 foot focus like you were talking about. At the end of the day, we end up being known for our iconic projects, which are what the landscape architects get to draw and actually manage and build and do the construction drawings for. So there's a lot of the district and downtown planning that gets built that, that we have seen through fruition. And a lot of the story that doesn't get told is how often we were involved from the planning <coughs> process way back years before the development happened. So a few of those that are well known, one is the Arena District in Columbus. Have any of you been there? It's turning 20 years old this year. Uh, and we were involved from the very beginning of the planning process with the Arena District through the urban design strategy, all the streets, the park, uh, even the architectural design guidelines. Every single bit of the way we've been involved and continue to be involved in the development there. And it's leveraged, I think, more than $2 billion of development in the city of Columbus. <coughs> Bridge Park is an example pretty recently built in Dublin, Ohio. So that's a suburb that was struggling with 
expanding their tax base and meeting a different type of residential demand. And there we were an, involved in the initial conversations with, hey, why don't you build this multi-story mixed-use development on the, on the river that seemed like an insane idea to some people. And it has been really nationwide starting to see a, a case study of how suburbs can really change, change the metric on their success. The Columbus Riverfront, I don't know if you, any of you have seen any pictures and any kind of marketing in Columbus recently, but the Riverfront gets a lot of views. And that was a, an idea and one of the catalytic projects, one of the focus projects from the Columbus Downtown Plan of 2010, which we authored. So we were involved in those conversations. And this one seemed far out to us because it was so expensive. It was such a huge effort to take this wide river, shrink it up, make it was ecological. There were so many layers to this project and the community rallied around it, stakeholders. There was a lot of really creative funding, private organizations, public investment. I mean, it was really a community-wide uh, effort to, to get that built, and people love it. it it's been a really impactful downtown. It's just completely changed our downtown. Um, closer to home, the Van, Aker, Van Aken district in Shaker Heights is a similar project that was, we were working with the developer in that case to think about this corner and this place and how it could be something new and different. And that's a really interesting place. If you haven't been there, I recommend visiting that. So those are some things that, that people recognize us for. And we also wanted just to introduce a couple planning processes that we think are aligned with the type of process we've designed along with the planning team here and leadership here to conduct with the city of Sandusky. And that's downtown Toledo and downtown Akron. And the downtown Toledo plan was completed in 2017. It was a similar process where they, we had an understanding phase and start to think about an overall master plan, but it started to drill down into focus areas and thinking about catalytic projects and how could downtown Toledo maximize on all, everything going well there and think about how those things can, can start to turn around and capitalize on some investment opportunities. So since the plan was complete in 2017, there's been a number of projects that were ideas in that plan that are already implemented that people can enjoy today. Uh, one example is Promenade Park, which we're, we're really proud of that. We got to work on that one. In Akron, it was similar. Uh, we, that's a downtown master plan. It started off with thinking about uh, Main Street. So it's very a very linear place, and Main Street is their, is their primary corridor. And so all of the focus areas ended up being surrounded by Main Street in Akron. So this is an, existing, uh, an example of the visioning on the focus areas that were identified for that plan on this slide. And Akron is seeing a number of those projects be implemented. And the Akron downtown plan was just completed in 2018, and they've already seen a lot of those ideas start to come to fruition. One example, the north side green there, that's, that's all the city, my understanding, I'm, and I might be wrong with the story, but it's a tactical urbanism project. So it's just, what would this look like if we just changed the paint? And it, it's a relatively low expensive, little, little investment, but it can really change a place. And they're on their third iteration on that. Um, there's a number of things that are in development. The Northside Marketplace has been uh, open for a long time. So it's lots of projects and varying in the design process are about to be built, about to open, and open for a while. So we've seen, seen some investment there. Overall, we build for people in place. Every project we do is unique to the city, to the village, to the place where we're working. We want to build on the assets that are here, the community that makes you strong, the built environment that makes you strong, the economic development drivers. What, what are all those key assets? How can we build value in the place and ultimately think about what makes places great for people? So that's our approach. And again, we're so excited to work with you. And thank you for the time to introduce ourselves today. Thank you. Commissioner's comments or questions? President. <coughs> Mr. Murray. So, Ms. Byington, um, I think that we uh, probably need a little bit of candor here about what it is that the, is the source of this money. Um, there have been decisions made in Washington that um, uh, the wealthy people in this country are making, are paying too much in taxes. And so what we have done is we've, there's this program that's been created, and there's no reason that we shouldn't take advantage of it. But what this does, it allows uh, folks who have significant, very significant capital gains um, from the sale of entire corporations or huge portfolios of stock to defer and even avoid uh, income taxes on those capital gains. I don't agree with that policy 
We're running trillion dollar deficits and we're talking about cutting, cutting things like Social Security and Medicaid in order to be able to pay for those deficits, which is crazy, but those are decisions that have been made. And so the question is, who is going to take advantage of that? What communities like ours will be able to take advantage of those investments? And what we are doing is we, along with other communities who are designated uh, as these uh, zones, uh, are, are taking steps to make sure that when that money comes in, it won't be invested in a way that had, has adverse impacts on our community. We want to shape it, we want to form it, we want to direct it in the, in the um, a way that we think is appropriate for Sandusky and its history and the other parts and pieces that are here. Um, I, I think I have that right, and so we can incentivize it to occur the way we want it to occur. But if you could just speak to not the larger uh, national politics, I don't mean to draw you into that, uh, but if you could just speak to that as being the rationale for this, because I don't understand, I don't, my, it is my understanding this is not something that we need to do to be able to take advantage of those investments, but that they could occur without our input and without our shaping it, and we might very well end up with some things that we don't want. Uh, through you, President Brady, to Mr. Murray. Um, yeah, that, that is absolutely correct. As, like I said earlier, it's not, our, it's not our dollars, but we know that we are designated as an opportunity zone, and we anticipate that there are going to be individuals or, or developers that want to take advantage of um, being able to defer capital gains. And we want to be able to have a plan um, which, as you stated, kind of aligns their development with what is best for the, for the city. So we don't want haphazard development. We want to make sure we have the right infrastructure in place, that we have capacity for you know, the residents, for parking, our streets, our, everything's in place for um, continued development that we anticipate will be happening downtown. Thank you. You're welcome. Additional questions or comments, commissioners? Mr. Kressler, we pull the commission on the motion. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. That ordinance is passed. Mr. Kressler, you present to us item number three. Yes, item number three is an ordinance authorizing the termination of the existing ambulance restocking agreement with Firelands Regional Medical Center of Sandusky, Ohio, approving and authorizing the execution of a new ambulance restocking agreement for restocking city ambulances with supplies and pharmaceuticals, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. There's been a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Murray. I really appreciate uh, Firelands uh, stepping up and becoming a, an even better partner in this community than it already has by essentially stocking our ambulances uh, when we have paid for that in the past. I think it's a great community service, and I'm appreciative of that. Thank you, Commissioner Murray. I, I did just a very surface uh, investigation in the value of this, and I was astounded by, by the dollars and cents. In fact, I, I shared with someone I thought it was in the neighborhood of eight or nine hundred dollars. It is multiple times of that. So I, th this probably belongs uh, in, uh, in uh, Mr. Whoopser's uh, report under donations, because this is certainly a very significant donation from Firelands Hospital. And, and we, we thank them, thank them for it, and hopefully it can continue for years to come. Additional comments or questions? Ms. Kress, you pull the commission on the motion. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington? Mr. Harris? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington? <laughs> Mr. Harris? Yes. That ordinance is passed. <laughs> Ms. Kressler, you present item number four, please. Item number four is an ordinance declaring a 2011 Chevrolet Malibu as unnecessary and unfit for city use 
pursuant to section 25 of the city charter, <coughs> authorizing and directing the city manager to purchase a 2020 Chevy Traverse from National Auto Fleet Group of Watsonville, California, for the police department, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, have we heard this ordinance? How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules of full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Been a motion and a second. Discussion. <clears throat> Do we need any uh, explanation? Uh, I, I see we have a representative from the police department here. Do we need any explanation as to buying an undercover car? Um. <clears throat> a lot of it goes down. The 2011 is just kind of unfit and Worn out. it's yeah, well over 100,000 miles on it. And through the talks with the police department, through fleet maintenance, they've decided that it's time to look at purchasing something new. So that's where we came up with this one. That's good enough for us. And Mr. Murray's family, that car is just getting broken in <laughs> at that point. <laughs> <laughs> additional, additional questions or comments from the commission? <laughs> Ms. Kress, you pull the commission on the motion. Mr. Murray. <laughs> well, I'm just not sure, but I think I'll vote yes. <laughs> Mr. Brady. I am voting yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington. Mr. Harris. Yes. And now on the order. <clears throat> Mr. Murray. Yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Ms. Twine. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Kressler, item number five, please. Five. Item number five is an ordinance declaring an Avoqua water champ mixer as unnecessary and unfit for city use, pursuant to section 25 of the city charter, ratifying the emergency purchase of an Avoqua Wallace and Tiernan water champ mixer for the Big Island Waterworks plant, and authorizing and directing the city manager and or finance director to expend funds to Business Incorporated of Westlake, Ohio, in the amount of $21,956 and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Mr. Chairman. Oh. <laughs> <It's too fast. laughs> I'm trying to beat Dave. <laughs> Commissioner, he's drinking my coffee. <laughs> we got a whole new routine now. Oh, right. He's drinking our coffee. I'm supposed to do my spiel first, okay? Okay, you're right. Here's the ordinance. How do you wish to proceed, Mr. Wright? Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Vice. I move for this adoption of the ordinance with suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Discussion. He's tough. <laughs> Mr. Klein, I thought for a moment that you were going to get shut out on this agenda, but that is not the case. I wonder if you'd explain to us, uh, or at least share with us, that we are not buying an overgrown garbage disposal. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, we have at, at a water plant, a wastewater plant, you typically want a backup system in case one fails. Well, uh, one of our mixers has failed. We've rebuilt it, reused it uh, for about 15 months, and it's failed again. So we want to replace it at this time and, and get something that has a little more life out of it. They typically get about five years, but we got just over a year with the rebuilt version. So uh, we want to make sure that we have that backup in place and that we can operate and that we're not in, in uh, jeopardy of not being able to use aluminum sulfate in our treatment system. So for $22,000, we pretty much have to use the exact same style model and manufacturer that we currently have. So that's why we would be purchasing this sole source. Thank you, Mr. Klein. Questions or comments, <clears throat> Commission? Ms. Kress, you pull the commission on the motion. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Now on the order. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Waddington? Mr. Harris? Yes. That ordinance is passed. That concludes our regular agenda items and we'll turn to our city manager. Thank you, Commission President, Commissioner, audience, and staff. I will start with donations. First, a grant in the amount of 10000 was received from the Randolph J. and Estelle M. Dorn Foundation toward the cost to hire a consultant to develop a plan for the downtown master plan opportunity zone. I'd ask for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Got a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, that motion be approved. Hearing no objection, that motion is approved. Thank you. Secondly, serving our seniors wants to donate a modified minivan to Sandusky Transit. 
details of the vehicle include that it's a 2017 Dodge Caravan, silver, brawn electric wheelchair ramp, uh, just over 25,000 miles with a VIN. I'm not going to even attempt to go through that, but uh, I'd ask for a motion to accept that vehicle. So moved. <laughs> second. Been a motion, a second discussion. Without objection. Equally do motion will be approved and hearing no objection. That motion is approved. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to administration. The city's in receipt of an economic development transfer or TREX from uh, New Beginning Enterprises. This is coming from ZHUG LLC located in Cleveland Heights. Uh, the new owners of 1058 Event Center in the Sineski Plaza desire to obtain this permit so liquor can be sold via cash bar at events and meetings hosted by local nonprofits. They expect to see an approximate 10,000 total investment will create an estimated four new jobs and generate $17,000 plus in revenue annually. It's requested that the city commission by motion provide authorization to sign off on the TREX transfer form indicating the city endorses and acknowledges this transfer and that it will be for an economic development project which will benefit the community. This proposed tracks will come back to the city commission one additional time in the near future uh, through the Department of Liquor Control for one more step uh, in which the city will indicate whether a hearing is requested prior to being authorized by the state. I'd ask for a motion to provide that authorization. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second uh, discussion. Without objection, the motion will be approved. Hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Thank you. Moving on to the fire department. Uh, Dan Brake, who's been with us for a while, will be retiring from Sandusky Fire on March 18th of this year as a lieutenant with 26 years of service. Dan started his career as a firefighter with Sandusky in 1994, and we just wanted to wish him well in his retirement. Uh, also, Chris Brandon will be promoted to lieutenant in March, and interviews will be starting soon to hire an additional firefighter. For the finance department, the city will no longer have an employee available to assist with filing municipal income taxes. For income tax assistance, residents can contact the regional income tax agency, better known as RITA, at 1-800-860-7482, <coughs> or visit their website at www.ritaohio.com. Tax payments can also be made at the Customer Accounting Office at City Hall, uh, located at 240 Columbus Avenue. And for Public Works, we wanted to welcome Mark Haney, who has joined Big Island Water Works as a shift operator, too, and congratulate Phil Baroni for his promotion to shift operator, too, at wastewater treatment. Also, the Snusky City Schools is in need of immediate uh, rock salt to ensure safety for employers, visitors, and students. In response to this emergency, streets and traffic, streets and traffic declared that 80,000 pounds of rock salt are no longer of use for city purposes and are seeking a motion of this commission to dispense that salt to Sandusky City Schools. I'd ask for that motion. So moved. Second. Is there a motion and a second? Discussion? Um, this is, a, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. Uh, this has occurred uh, several years in a row, and we have, uh, uh, on several years in a row, uh, directed the schools to the cooperative purchasing program that the county engineer uh, uh, maintains, and we have encouraged uh, the schools to seek their supplies uh, from that source, I'd, I'd like this to be the last year that we do this. I'm not, I'm not going to vote to approve it again next year. It's, this is just out of order, um, so it's not being handled well, and I'll vote to approve it this time, but not again. Without objection, the motion will be approved, and hearing no objection, that motion is approved. <clears throat> Thank you, Commission President, and uh, Commission Vice President Murray, your point is well taken. Uh, just, just a second, Mr. Whipster. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this is perhaps my failure in not making an announcement at the beginning of the meeting that we ask that cell phones be uh, not just silenced, but perhaps shut off for the very reason that we've gone through now three or four times of being interrupted by, uh, by cell phones. So I would appreciate anyone with a cell phone if they would uh, at least silence it and, and hopefully turn it off. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Colson. <laughs> Just to say, uh, Commission Vice President Murray, your point's really well taken. We did say to the schools, while we would, of course, want to help in this emergency, that good planning will hopefully eliminate the need for that to happen in the future. And, and uh, we think that point was received and hopefully we won't be back in this situation next year. Uh, also, uh, Greenhouse staff have begun accepting Palm and Fern reservations for Good Friday, <laughs> Easter, and graduations. So please plan ahead and call 419-627-5884 to place any order that you might have for ferns or palms. Uh, also, for the planning department, a neighborhood initiative will honor 
Black History Month on Friday, February 28th with the screening of Remember the Titans. The event is open to the public and will take place at the Nehemiah Center beginning at 4 p.m. And the Planning Commission meeting is scheduled for February 26th on Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. in the Commission Chambers. Board of Zoning Appeals is scheduled for Thursday, March 19th at 4.30 p.m. in Commission Chambers. Landmark Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 18th at 4.30 p.m. in Commission Chambers. And Arts and Culture is scheduled for Tuesday, March 17th at 5.15 p.m. in Commission Chambers. Also a great update on our Sineski Transit ridership numbers. Uh, fixed route passengers in um, uh, is 20,164 passengers in January. That's a total of 45,000 plus miles traveled. Uh, in 2019, that number was 13,380 passengers for 23,283 miles. And for those of you who remember, last year was almost a complete doubling of the previous year. So we have doubled down again uh, nearly, uh, with particularly with those miles traveled by Sandusky Transit. Um, clearly that's a really critical service. And as all of us uh, get together to discuss workforce issues on a regional level, um, transit may be the most important of those issues, getting people you know, to and from their work, particularly in a relatively low wage economy. So um, with that being said, moving on to the Recreation Department, the Sandusky Recreation Department is applying to Ohio's AAPs put a lid on it, bike helmet safety program to receive 75 bike helmets for use in the Recreation Department Safety Day collaboration with Sandusky Fire and Police and Fire and Regional Medical Center this summer. Safety Day will include a bicycle safety component it will be hosted at 222 Meg Street. The deadline for the helmet program is Monday, March 2nd. I'm not sure if I need a motion to approve that, but I might as well ask for one. Um, could I please have a motion to approve that application? So moved. Second. Motion and second. <laughs> Hearing no objection, that motion is approved with our thanks. Thank you. Uh, and then just an update, Sandusky Recreation's award-winning culinary program, Midtown Supper Club, two presents will host its second annual dinner on Wednesday, March 4th. Once again at Halo Live at 805 Wayne Street. Doors open at 5 p.m. with dinner served at 5.30. The evening will include a three-course meal created, prepared, and served by our very own chefs in training under the instruction of Chef Katie Karabkin of Sweet Potato Catering and Chef Brad Kraft of Sandusky City Schools. Entertainment will be provided by Sandusky Recreation's mini Tapa Doodles, a kids <coughs> dance team led by instructor Morgan Johnson. A silent auction featuring a variety, a variety of culinary items will be available throughout the night. Tickets for the event are $25 each or two for $40 and various levels for three or more <coughs> tickets. Tickets can be purchased online at www.cityofsandusky.com slash recreation in the program section. For more information on questions regarding the Midtown Supper Club 2 Presents event, please call the Sandusky Rec Department at 419-627-5888 or 419-627-5886 or contact Tondra Frisbee directly at tfrisbee, T-F-R-I-S-B-Y at ci.sandusky.oh.us. That concludes my remarks for this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Commissioner, do you have any questions for City Manager? <clears throat> I brought this up before. Um, uh, I would like to know if at some point if I could maybe get with you, sit down with you, uh, uh, Mr. Webster, and talk about adding possibly a third dump day, or we tried it a few years ago placing uh, dumpsters in the sixth area, you know, the zones for folks to just help clean up the city a little bit. Uh, through the commission president, Commissioner Waddington, absolutely, we'd be happy to sit in. Uh, whenever you're ready, just let me know. Okay. We'll get that on the books and hopefully be able to accommodate. Good idea. Thank you, Mr. Wadding. Yep. Additional questions for the city manager? Commissioners, <coughs> do you have any items of old business to discuss? That's what my chairman is, yeah. Commissioner Murphy. Just an update on the golf course. We did receive a response from uh, the represent local representative of the diocese, uh, that's Father Monty Hoyles, uh, and they are putting together their team so they can meet with us uh, and was an encouraging uh, response and uh, we'll just have to see where those discussions go. Great, thank you. I believe this would be the opportunity for each, uh, under old business, for each commissioner to make public their selections for our charter review uh, committee and uh, in, Ms. in Commissioner Poole's absence, I will ask Mrs. Cresser to share with us and the public uh, his two choices. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Poole has appointed Jeff Berquist, a uh, local realtor, and also Mr. Tom Lamarca, I believe a retired real estate 
agent. Excellent. As his choice. Excellent choices. Thank you. Commissioner Harris. Uh, yes, uh, my two uh, recommendations, uh, one being uh, Duff Milkey, uh, who serves as a, a general counsel in a business development uh, for Cedar Fair. And uh, last uh, but not least, uh, Alex Jones, uh, who is the uh, parent involvement and community engagement specialist uh, for Sandusky City Schools. Excellent. Commissioner Murray. My two appointments, uh, first, David Mack, who has lived in Sandusky for the last 14 years. He's currently a member of the board of directors for the Chesapeake Lofts in downtown Sandusky. He has a degree in finance from Miami University and is the operations manager for a company that you might know, uh, Brady Sign Company. Uh, David lives in Sandusky with his wife, Christine, and their two children, <coughs> Ella and David. And my second appointment, uh, and this is in line with, I think a lot of the commissioners are looking to appoint some, some younger members of our community and get a whole new generation involved. I mean, we, we want some experienced hands in there as well. Uh, but um, I, I think that uh, uh, that's a really great thing to see that turnover. So I'm going to appoint Lisa Sortino, who grew up in Sandusky and is a graduate of Sandusky High School. Uh, many of you will recognize the name. Her family has long been involved in the lodging industry in our community, uh, extending back five decades now. Lisa is the managing partner of what is known as the LLV Group, who own and manage two local hot hotels and lives here in Sandusky. Thank you. Good choices. I, I too, have gone with the, uh, gone with the youth movement. Uh, <coughs> my selections are uh, Adriana DeLuca Guerra. Uh, Adriana is a customer success manager at Morningstar Investments an independent investment research company. Uh, she graduated from DePaul University in 2013 with a Bachelor's of Science in Economics. She's married to uh, Tom Guerra and has a, a daughter, Aria, and resides here in Sandusky, Ohio. <coughs> My second pick, uh, and although uh, she probably does not realize this, but I am related to her in, in uh, some degree, is uh, Melanie Murray. Melanie's a graduate of Sandusky High School, Miami University of Ohio with a degree in urban planning, and she is presently employed by the Perkins Township uh, Zoning, uh, as a Perkins Township Zoning Inspector. Uh, I am probably her second cousin three times removed, I think. <laughs> I think that's right, actually. Twine, Commissioner Twine. I have appointed uh, Jade Castile, um, young lady I met um, a number of months ago. I'm very impressed by her, um, her desire to participate in, in the city. Um, Jade is a 2013 graduate of, o of The Ohio State University with a bachelor's degree in political science pre-law with a minor in English. She is the business manager of the United Way of Erie County and previously was crisis legislative assistant for the Ohio House of Representatives, legal assistant with Manley Dees Koklaski LLC and government relations intern for Columbus Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my second appointment is uh, Kima Yandel. Um, she relo relocated to Sandusky from Seattle and was looking for opportunities to learn about uh, our beautiful city and get more involved in working in the workings of the city. So I'm excited about those two appointments. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Munger. I don't know about you guys, but everybody's younger than me, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard everybody seeing the list. Um, I chose uh, Kurt Kresser, uh, the son of a former city uh, commissioner and a funeral director with uh, Leon Groff Funeral Homes and also Connor Whalen. He served on the uh, Charter Review Committee in the past, and uh, he did a really good job when I served with him, so I chose him. So He's a teacher at Sandusky High School. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Waddick. Uh, my first one's uh, Drew Meredith. Drew's a lifelong resident of Sandusky, serves as Vice President of Operations and Marketing Strategic Planning for Firelands Regional Medical Center. He has served on the City's Tax Incentive Review Committee and the CRA Housing Council since 2018. Uh, my second one is Judy Corso. Judy's a lifelong resident and former Sandusky City School Board member. As a former business owner, she remains active with uh, working with the local school levies. She's done a lot of work with that and then uh, also started and runs the popular art walk in downtown Sandusky. It's currently going on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wyken. Uh, appears we have a very diverse uh, group of individuals for this, what I think is a very important uh, committee and a very important task ahead of them. I've asked Mrs. Kresser to reach out to each of these 
individuals and advise them of <coughs> a, or a date that fits their uh, their schedule for an organizational meeting where they will elect <coughs> the chairperson and uh, the process will move forward from there. Thanks to all of them for their for their willingness uh, willingness to serve. We were supposed to ask them first. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have an additional item of, uh, of I, I think this would be called old business. It's, uh, I think it's appropriate under old business. It's uh, the issue of, of our uh, broadcasting this meeting on, on Buckeye Cable. I, I think most of us are aware that we've experienced an issue with that and some finger pointing in, in both directions, but uh, our IT people are absolutely certain and, and I believe them that the issue is with Buckeye Cable. Uh, we've moved this discussion out of Sandusky to a to a higher level. We moved it to a Toledo uh, market with, uh, with a representative in Toledo who's agreed to review the issue and, and the options that, that are before us. Uh, I, I uh, am hesitant to uh, ask my fellow commissioners for their, uh, their feelings on this issue because I think we want to make an informed decision. I know this is an important topic. It's an important topic uh, uh, to all of us that uh, we continue to be able to broadcast in some fashion. But I think to make that decision without having the facts as to uh, uh, what potential costs may be or the timeliness of it is, is probably uh, uh, folly to do that. So I will, we will wait this out uh, for a bit longer and, and uh, know that the ball is squarely in uh, Buckeye's cable, Cable's court. Uh, any other items of old business? Mr. Chairman, if I may, Mr. Murray. If I just may t uh, tag on to that comment that you just made. There's been some, there's been a lack of coordination and the sharing of information within Buckeye Cable itself. So we have had a number of residents who've called, said they're not getting the program. Um, that's accurate, uh, but they're indicating that it's the, it's the city's fault or not they're not receiving the feed. Actually, all the IT folks have acknowledged that no, they are getting the feed. It's the, the problems at their end. So um, I'm not suggesting that Buckeye is deliberately misinforming the public, but the public is being misinformed um, about what the reason is for that not being broadcast. Thank you. That that uh, that's important to share that information. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Twain. Um, the police search committee had their first meeting on February 12th. Um, basically, it was an organizational meeting. Um, I thought it was a good meeting. Uh, I believe we have a, a nice, diverse group of people that are part of that search committee. So we are looking forward to when the uh, vacancy closes and then going through the applications and paring those down for interviews. That's great. Thanks for that update. We look forward to future updates. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make a comment uh, going back to, uh, you know, our recommendations uh, for the charter review. Uh, I absolutely think it's important. First of all, it's, it's just very encouraging to see much of the uh, diversity. And I, I absolutely love just seeing, you know, young folks uh, like Jade, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for gosh, 20 plus years, <laughs> as well as uh, Alex Jones. Uh, I think that is a trend uh, that I certainly hope continues uh, because as we look forward and we think of our future, um, you know, ultimately the torch will be passed on to folks like ourselves. And if, and if there's more of us who take the initiative to become involved and, uh, and, and sort of claim our stake in this, in this whole process, I think that'll only set you know, the standard for, uh, for those to follow. So I appreciate, uh, you know, all the recommendations and for your participation. So thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I, I agree with your comments wholeheartedly and, and I, I've tried to warn most of those 14 individuals. I will <laughs> say it publicly because I've said it privately mm -hmm. to most of them. Uh, they should be forewarned that uh, out of that charter review committee historically come commissioners. Mm -hmm. So be very careful. <laughs> it's our farm team. Yeah, farm team, exactly. <laughs> Farms. Uh, any other items of uh, well, that old business? Uh, we'll move to new business. <coughs> the new business. I have some housekeeping under new business. I need to request a motion to set a public hearing at the March 9th commission meeting for the city's 2020 budget. So moved. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. Hearing no objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Any other items of new business? We'll move to audience participation. Please step to the podium and give us your name and address and share with us your thoughts. Mr. Zulo. <laughs> well, he's got to introduce himself first. 
Mike Stuloff, I live down here, uh, in, in downtown Sandusky. Uh, I'm glad you're interested in uh, uh, cable, but uh, one of the most important services uh, Buckeye provides this community is broadband service. Uh, that's, that stuff's really important to the economic health of this community, uh, to any community. Um, it's uh, tough uh, in, in this, uh, getting, uh, a, getting a competitive marketplace for, for those services is tough. And uh, the cities don't have the same authority and uh, power that they used to have uh, to ensure the best service. Um, but I would encourage you to do everything you can to, make, to incentivize uh, uh, the competitors in the marketplace uh, to provide the best service and to uh, uh, make sure that there are openings for competitive service. Um, it's, it would be better for our local businesses if uh, they had choices. And uh, anything you folks can do to <coughs> pursue that um, would be good, not just for the residents, uh, but for business as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Law. Audience participation on any issue. Sorry for a third time, Mr. Mayor. Tim Schwanger, 362 Sheffield Way. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, a simple nod of the head, yes or no, would be fine. You don't have to answer it uh, voice-wise. <clears throat> I assume that there's going to be a schedule of meetings for the Charter Re Review Committee for the public to attend to listen to what's going on, number one. Uh, number two, since the uh, rock salt issue to the schools was under the city manager's report, there was no opportunity for the public to ask uh, questions on that, so I'll ask one question. Um, the schools are paying for that rock salt, correct? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. President, Tom Lamarca, 206 48th Street. With the uh, extended uh, time frames for the Shoreline Drive project and the Jackson Street Pier to be completing their work uh, on or about May 22nd, and that comes right at the same time that Bike Week begins May 22nd through May 30th, are we going to make sure that they get everything cleaned up so that the downtown is presentable for the thousands of uh, people that come to town? That's that's one. And um, two, uh, can uh, the the Cook Building is slated to be coming down sometime in that same time frame as Bike Week? Uh, you know, and it was originally presented that they were going to do it in January, and then it was moved to February, and uh, now it's being indicated that it's going to be May-ish, the end of May. And so I would like to ask the commission or whomever is in charge of that to <clears throat> get them to work with Bike Week and not tear that thing down and have a big mess downtown at that same week. Uh, pu push it back another week into the first week of June or get it done in April. Thank you very much. Good chance to both those questions. Good questions. Any other uh, residents that wish to speak under audience participation? Move if, to adjourn. If not, I'll take a push. <laughs> 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 second. Don't move. Yeah, second. <laughs> Say we're in second. Well, I don't have to wait for an invitation for that.